Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. Rosh Chodesh Tov. We begin the month of Kislev, the month of vision, the month of miracles. It's a month of light and a month of hope. So the, uh, during Kislev, during this month, which is the month in which we celebrate Hanukkah, our hearts are specially <clears throat> in tune with uh, fulfilling the true vision of why we are in this world, what's our purpose here, what's the true uh, meaning of being in exile. And um, it's a month in which we realign, we, it's like a chiropractic adjustment in which we realign all these dreams and all these hopes and we put them in the right uh, track so we can really live a miraculous existence because Jews live a miraculous existence. If, if you don't believe me, there's no common sense, there's no uh, explanation of why we're still here with all this anti-Semitism going through the ages, all these wars, pogroms, terrorism, Holocaust, slavery, you name it, inquisition, and we're still very much alive in this world. So the month of, um, of Kislev is a month of dreams. And according to Rabbi Itzhak Ginsberg, he gives us a beautiful explanation. He says that in the Torah, we read during the month of Kislev, we find most of the dreams mentioned in the Torah. So during the month of Kislev, we read all these dreams. And uh, in the five books of the Torah, we find ex 10 explicit dreams through the whole Torah. And one of them, uh, which is the first dream, which is the dream that Avimelech, the king of Gerar, had, appears in the Torah in the portion of Ayeira, which is in the, in the month of Heshvan. The rest of the, of, the, of the dreams, the other nine dreams, appear in the Torah portions of Ayetze, Vayeshev, Miketz, which are all uh, read during the month of Kislev. So according to the well-known Torah principle that one should live with the times, like this is what the sages have taught us, they say that we have to live with the Torah portion of the week. This is the Jewish horoscope for us, because in every week, the energy of the week contains uh, what we need to learn that week. It's, it's very much in tune to what we're living. Like I give many Torah classes and it's funny because sometimes I give like the Torah portion in a, to a big group of people and uh, people come to me afterwards and they say, Margie, you know what? How did you know? And I say, how did I know what? He says, you were talking to me. You were, you gave me the answers to my questions and, and it doesn't happen with only one person. It happens with many. So really the Torah is a, is a book of life and it's very much alive and it's very much in tune with the, everybody's life and what everybody's going on, uh, having to deal with in their personal lives. So the, the topic of dreams would be a proper meditative subject during the month of Kislev because the Torah is full of, of dreams in this month. So during this month of dreams, one should strive to examine and clarify in one soul the topic of the dream to plumb the depths of its roots into the soul and to solve its riddle in a good and proper fashion. So uh, I made some, some investigation about dreams. It says that every person has around three to seven dreams every night, which is very interesting. Sometimes you wake up and you feel you, you didn't have a dream. You can't even remember what you dreamt. And sometimes you wake up and they feel very much alive. You feel you were living that dream. Like this week I had a dream that I was sweating because I forgot to cook for Shabbat and I, I didn't have time to go and buy the, the food and I didn't prepare. And when I was getting home, I was already late and I didn't even light my Shabbat candles. And suddenly I'm lost in a, in a, in a park, a water park of children. And I can't call my husband and tell him that I'm, I, I don't know where I am because it's Shabbat. So I really, I suffered. And the sages teach that when you suffer in a dream, really that suffering is, is, it's like suffering when you're awake. It's like whatever you have to suffer, you suffer in a dream. It's like you're cleansing yourself. It's part of your cleansing. So it's better to suffer in a dream than to suffer in real life. So when you wake up and you say, Baruch Hashem, it was a dream. Thank God you're, 
you're like sweating it. Like I was lost in this place. I didn't even know where I was and I couldn't call my husband. And I wake up and I realize it was not true. Then it's like, what a relief. And the suffering really is a cleansing process. So it says that we have around three to seven dreams at night, every night, and they can last seconds or they can last 30 minutes a dream you can be in a dream for 30 minutes and i've had dreams that I, it's to be continued and it continues and it continues i i bet everybody has had these dreams and we had co concurrent dreams that we dream many times the same dream so what is going on when we're dreaming it says that the moment you're dreaming uh, at night is really when the brain is also active and this is when you're at the moment of your sleep where you have deep sleep which is called the REM cycle. And this is when we're dreaming and the brain is just as productive at that moment as it would be when you're awake. It's the same thing. So when we're, uh, so the, the, re, the reprocessing of, 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 of what's in our subconscious. So what we really dream about at night is what is dormant in our subconscious. So that's why it's so important to fill our days with good thoughts, to see nice things, to read good books, to listen to good music, because all these things go to our subconscious and then they are dormant during the day, but at night they pop out. Also, the Talmud says that one sixtieth of a dream is really prophecy. And that's why it's so important that when you tell a dream to somebody, it, you you make sure that you, you tell it to somebody that's gonna, it, say good things to you like you know if you have a bad dream and you come to somebody and he's going to tell you horrible things then it can become true it and what you should do is always tell your dreams to somebody that will tell you you know what this means that you're going to have a long life it means you're going to become rich it becomes you're going to always be healthy that says something uh, good about the dream because it can be at one sixtieth of a prophecy and, and the same Talmud says, no dreams are without nonsense. So even though you, re you wake up the next morning and you say, what a crazy dream. It really doesn't make any sense that I was lost in a park, in a water park, and I didn't know where I was. And it, like suddenly I'm in this place. It, there's, there's no nonsense in the dream. Like really subconsciously, you could really think like, okay, I would be, I, I'm scared to be lost in life and not know where I am standing. I, I, I need to know where I am. So, um, so it's very important to see who's going to interpret your dreams and make sure that they always say something positive about them. And um, the prophecy, when in the times of the prophets, we don't have prophecy in these days, but prophecy really is geared to, towards the future. It's telling us about what's gonna be, like when we had the prophets, they used to prophesy about what was gonna be with us. And um, the good thing about it is that when a person does teshuvah, a person transforms, he changes, he, every day we wake up, we have a choice, we have a new day, we can choose right from wrong, and whatever we choose, it's gonna create our destiny. So really, as much as a um, prophet comes with prophecy, it's never like written in stone. It can always be changed. But a dream, it's felt to be so real and really subconsciously you are living the dream. Like when you're sleeping, it's not something of the future, it's something that you're really experiencing at that moment. That, uh, that that's why it's so important that when you wake up, you assess the dream and you really try to see what is the message of that dream so you can really correct whatever it needs to be corrected or live your dream. Because sometimes it's amazing dreams you have that are talking to you about things that you have really deep inside of yearnings and hopes that you have inside of you and you don't have the courage to go and live these dreams. So going back to Rabbi Ginsberg, he says that each month is associated with a particular gemstone from amongst the 12 gemstones that were in the breastplate of the Kohen Gadol. And the gemstone of Kislev, <clears throat> the ninth month, which corresponds from the month of Nisan, eh, which is also the nine dreams, is the ninth stone of the breast, breast it's also the ninth uh, stone of the breastplate, breastplate, is called the amethyst, which in Hebrew it's called anaklama. In, um, in the book of, uh, of Hebrew roots of the Radak, he explains that the root of aklama is halam, which means dream. 
So there's no coincidences in, in, in the Torah world. Everything is really exact. And whomever wears one of these amethysts in one finger will very likely see dreams. So we know that the principal Torah figure connected with the dreams, both as dreamer and as a dream interpreter, was Yosef Hatzadik, the son of Yaakov and, and Rachel. And he was nicknamed by his brothers the master of dreams. And the four dreams preceding those of Joseph in the dream, uh, the dream of Abimelech, Jacob's first and second dreams, and the dream of Laban were transparent and did not need special interpretation. So the dream of Abimelech, who was the king, uh, the king, the pharaoh, uh, Jacob's first and second dreams, and the dream of Laban were transparent. They, you didn't need to interpret them because they were very straightforward in what uh, they meant. In these dreams, God or an angel appeared to the dreamer and directly revealed information to them. He, it was direct, they, you don't need to interpret, you don't need to like meditate and see what is they trying to tell me. It was very direct. And the two of Pharaoh, the two dreams of Pharaoh, they required interpretation with the two uh, dreams of the ministers of Pharaoh that were in jail, that they told uh, Joseph their dreams and Joseph interpreted them for him. And uh, so they had become enclosed in the imaginative faculty of the dreamer's soul and appearing in the form of allegory and riddle. So there are some dreams that are straightforward. You don't need to look a lot to understand what they're meaning, but there are some dreams in our life that need to be interpreted. We really don't pay much attention to our dreams in general, unless it's a very shaky dream, but uh, it's interesting to, to look what, you, what you're holding in your subconscious. It's interesting to see what are your fears, what's holding you back from something. They can say a lot about you. And by in, 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 uh, understanding them, you can really work on them and really do amazing things. So yet the solution to Joseph's dreams, the prostration of his brother's sheaves, and the sun, moon, and 11 stars to him, if you remember that he dreamed that, all, that these sheaves were bowing down to him, was transparent because it was exactly 12 sheaves. So it was, uh, it was 11 sheaves. It was the 11 brothers. And then... Uh, Jacob also had, uh, Joseph also had a dream that the moon and the stars and the sun were bowing down to him. And this dream meant that it was also his brothers and his mother and his father that were bowing down to him. So here we see that his father Jacob understood that the meaning of the symbolism of Joseph's dream was that they were to come and prostrate themselves before Joseph. And Jacob wonders saying in Genesis, do you want me, your mother and your brothers to come and prostrate themselves in the ground for you? And nevertheless, his father waited to see the result. He, he didn't, he, he waited and he knew this was going to be, this was how it was going to be. So from this, it is clear that just as Joseph the Tzaddik, um, the foundation of the world, is an intermediary that connects the spiritual and physical realms in the, in, in the secrets of the verse recited in our daily uh, prayers in the morning prayers we say even everything in heaven and earth translates as the that is in hold of heaven and earth he also is an intermediary that connects the transparent dreams which do not need solutions enigmatic dreams which need interpretation and the later stemming from a high sources since enigmatic dreams are an expression of God's essence which is manifested in the ability to sustain the paradox uh, and uh, here Rabbi Ginsberg finishes off saying that another form of the Hebrew root halam is haklama which means health in general physical and mental health it's talking about both and, the, and it says that the recovery from illness is particular in thanking God after being sick and recovering. King Hiskiyahu prays, restore me from the root halam and make me live. And today, homeopathic doctors or naturalists have explained that the appearance of a dream 
is in one so in, in one soul is similar to the phenomenon of a sick of a sick person sweating. So as I said before, when you're sweating a dream, when you're suffering a dream, you're really expi expiating suffering in this world. Like it really takes away pain from the world when you're suffering in a dream. So when you wake up from a nightmare, instead of being shocked and scared and whatever, say, thank you, Hashem, you took pain away from me in a dream. That's, that's cheap. At least you wake up and the, the nightmare is over. Sometimes we have nightmares, real nightmares in this world, and we wake up the next day and the nightmare is still there. So what it's saying here is in that the sweating is the separation and secretion of waste from what is wholesome. And this process is one of the first signs that the sick one is in the path of recovery. Like a person that never sweats, it's not good. Like if a person goes and exercises and then runs a marathon and he's not sweating, it's dangerous because you create toxins when you're exercising and all that. So when you're not sweating, all these toxins are not coming out of your body. So he says here that the, through the separation of waste products, it is certainly an important external property of the dream at a deeper level. The dream serves to reveal in one soul God's light, providence, and will. So the dream serves to connect us to Hashem. And we find that the presence of evil or waste products prevents divine revelation. So when a person is not being able to get rid of all this evil, of all this waste that he is carrying within him, that is heavy, toxic thoughts, toxic speech, toxic actions, then this is, um, this is a, a formula for, for sickness. And when we get rid of all this, when we get rid of bad thoughts, by toxic people, toxic everything around us, and we it's like sweating, then this is the beginning of healing. And um, so because of its health nature, the inner, so this is what, uh, I'm sorry, so this is what uh, Rabbi Ginsburg comes to teach us uh, this, this month. So we should learn to look at our dreams, we should look at them in this new way, not be scared of them, it's just a, a healthy process for every you, human being. In another sense, Kislev is a, is a month of dreaming, is a month of hope. We should use our dreams to reach higher heights in our life and to hope and dream for a better future for ourselves. And remember that the light of Kislev should, li should really light the way for us. We should really connect to this principle. And in that way, we will live uh, a little higher. Thank you.